What you guys are seeing is my channel about 15, 16 years ago. This is like my oldest content. The first few videos on the channel that weren't uh, taken down due to copyright, music, or whatever. These, these are the first eight videos on my channel. Been doing this for a long time. I've managed to remain consistent with the views I pull somehow. Of course, it was a lot simpler back then. No fancy titles, no fancy thumbnails, just me playing a game. I enjoyed and posting it and showing people how to improve at Call of Duty. Man, you don't know the good times are there until they're gone, sadly. But but somehow we've remained consistent with the views we pull. We've had to kind of switch gears and I've had to kind of be real with you guys over the course of, you know, the past five years especially that Call of Duty is in the fucking toilet. Seriously. And look, man, I, I don't even really know how to make this video or what I'm necessarily trying to say. It's going to be a bit rambly, but... I fear that a lot of people that started out kind of like me, maybe later, or maybe they started out just doing this for fun with Call of Duty, I fear that they are going to stop covering the game entirely. I fear that a lot of your favorite Call of Duty content creators are just done and they're going to be replaced by these just shipbirds, these kiss-ass people that are not going to be honest with you, these cheaters, these people that are going to get uh, paid uh, by Activision under the, under the table and whatnot. I, I fear that's the future of things because anyone who is posting Call of Duty right now, especially multiplayer, but also Warzone, isn't really pulling a lot of good viewership and nobody really seems to care. I keep saying this. I keep saying like, hey, guys, support the content, not just my content, like, like this video, of course, but like other COD content creators' videos as well because it's going to be the worst year ever. We got to this point because people have not spoken up. You know, we live in a society, yeah, I'm doing that meme. We live in a society where people want to be surrounded by yes men, essentially. Well, let's say you guys gain like 50 pounds of fat, right? Let's just say everybody watching this video gained 50 pounds of fat. That's gonna look bad on most people watching this video, assuming you're not like Snoop Dogg anorexic or whatever. But anyway, let me ask you this, and I want you to answer in the comment section honestly. If you're not gonna answer honestly, then don't even bother commenting, okay? Which group of friends would you rather have? We're gonna separate them into group A and group B. Group A is going to ignore the fact that you've gained a lot of weight, that you're breathing heavy, that you seem out of shape, that you seem winded going up a simple flight of stairs, that you're eating way more, spending way more on food, yada yada. And group B is going to say, wow, you've gained 50 pounds of fat. You look like shit and you sound like shit. Which friend group would you want? Most of you, I mean, honestly speaking, most of you would want A, right? Here's the kicker, though. Friend group B are better friends because they're not going to lie to you. It's harsh. Yes, it sucks to hear. Yes, but they're not going to lie to you. Why do you guys think I sit up here and complain and, and don't move on from the series? Because this is bigger than Call of Duty the series. They're the worst offender. I'm going to keep calling them out on it. But this is a game-wide, like a, a, an industry-wide problem, right? Like every game, mainstream game you see coming out has some sort of stupid battle pass. It's made by mostly incompetent devs. And nothing is, is as good as it could be. Even when it's good, it never really reaches its full potential. I'm going to cover some stuff that you need to hear. Much like the people that are going to tell you that you gained a lot of weight and you look awful. Uh, I'm going to tell you what you need to hear, not necessarily what you want to hear. I'm sick of these weak people. I, I'm sick of these people that want to be pampered and babied and want participation trophies. I mean, I'm not trying to be like your boomer dad here, angry at whatever for, you know, not pulling themselves up by their bootstraps when your boomer dad probably bought his house for like $10,000 in 1970 working a job at McDonald's part time. Not trying to be like that, but I am trying to be honest and I am trying to be harsh because we need harsh people now more than ever because everyone, I mean, everyone has just gotten so below average, so mediocre, and I'm just not going to accept this mediocrity in the franchise that I made my, my start in, that I made my living off of, that I've made my living off of for the past 15 years. I'm not going to do it. You guys may have noticed there's more sponsorships on the channel than, than ever before right now, and that's because, like, 
this game, it's not giving me anything to work with. And, you know, again, Call of Duty channels, man. It's going to be the worst year ever. Is next year going to be better? That's not up to us. A lot of the times, it's not up to us. I mean, if you look at Jev here, look at Jev. Like, he's playing Bloodborne, gets double the views as Modern Warfare 3. Why in the fuck would Jev not just quit Call of Duty entirely and become a variety game player? Like, he's primarily known for Call of Duty, but why wouldn't he just stop altogether? Like, why wouldn't he just play it in November, December, and then quit the rest of the year? That's literally what Call of Duty essentially wants us to do. I mean, uh, with the way they're treating us. And it's not for lack of trying from Sledgehammer even. But it's a deeper rooted problem. And I want to get into this in depth after this sponsor. And uh, guys, we need to not be complacent here. This is not a time to say stop complaining, yada yada. If we don't start complaining, it's going to get way worse. And we're going to experience a crash similar to the way we did back in the early 80s. Uh, I'm not just saying that like I've been doing this long enough to know what I'm talking about and I don't want this to happen but if this trend keeps going it will happen but anyway let's get into the sponsor I'll be back in a sec today's video is sponsored by boot.dev and as someone with ADHD it's really hard for me personally to learn new things if I'm not like fully interested in it. And learning a new skill, especially coding, can be a little boring sometimes. So what boot.dev does is it aims to fix that issue. Boredom is not gonna be a factor because you will learn Python and Go programming languages with the smartest way to do that, and that is making it feel like a captivating RPG-like experience. The platform is designed to get you writing a ton of code because getting your hands on the keyboard and shipping projects is really the only way to learn. But maybe you guys are thinking, just show me the money. Well, programmers have amazing earning potential. According to Stack Overflow, the median salary for back-end developers in the US in 2023 was over $100,000. That's six figures. With that said though, at Boot Dev, they believe that learning to code is not a get rich quick scheme. They believe in going deep and taking time on the fundamentals so that you are as prepared as you can be for your job search. And if you don't like working with others, programmers often have the option to work remotely or from home. So guys, click the link in the description box and use my code BLAMETRUTH to get 25% off your first payment for boot.dev. That's 25% off your first month or your first year, depending on the subscription you choose. All right, guys, welcome back to the video. Let's cover this Wikipedia article on the video game crash of 1983 in depth here. And I want you to tell me honestly, if this doesn't sound like pretty much exactly what we're getting nowadays, it's almost a mirror image of what's happening now. It was a large scale recession that happened uh, from two years, from 83 to 85. The crash was attributed to several factors, including market saturation in the number of video game consoles and available games, many of which were poor quality. While we don't have as many video game consoles coming out, we have poor quality games, mainly poor quality mainstream games coming out that are just not meeting the mark. Waning interest in console games in favor of personal computers also played a role, and that is a trend that we are seeing right now. People are giving up on consoles because consoles don't make a lot of sense when they're just kind of poor man's PCs. Why not just get a PC nowadays? I, I don't know, guys. It, it's eerily similar to what happened back then, and with the way that greed is taking over, one thing I've learned throughout my entire life on this planet that we call Earth is that when you are too greedy, you are going to get burned, and it's all going to crash. Never, ever be too greedy. Because, guys, I, I mean, when video game companies like are, are laying off hundreds of thousands of employees across the board because they're not meeting the profit quota and they are just nickel and diming the consumer base to death during a recession where inflation is at an all-time high and prices for basic necessities are at an all-time high. How is that sustainable? Logically speaking, I'm not trying to be doom and gloom. How in the fuck is that sustainable? Someone please answer this for me. The reason I am here 
calling out Call of Duty. And the reason I will not stop talking about it, if you're thinking I'm like gonna quit complaining about it anytime soon and I'm gonna take a break this year, I'm not. I'm actually gonna make probably more videos than ever before as soon as I uh, get some personal uh, home renovations squared away and whatnot that I need to get done. But yeah, man, like I'm not gonna stop this. If anything, the worse it gets, the more fire I'm going to show. This, th this whole, like, YouTube thing has chewed up and spit out so many people I've known over the years. I've seen so many people come and go. I've seen people come after me and go before me. I've seen people come before me and go, you know, decades ago. I've seen people start out a year ago and they've already quit. I I've seen it all. I have somehow stuck with this for over 15 years. I am not about to stop anytime soon. No matter how bad the gaming industry gets. If it crashes, I will be there to cover it. If it succeeds, I will be there to cover it and play video games again. For the first time in my life, I, I sit here, March 31st, 2024, not really wanting to play any sort of video game. I mean, they've, they've always been a part of my life since I was three years old, you know, 32 years. And I'm sitting here and I'm saying right now that nothing is really just grabbing me at the moment. I, I know Helldivers 2 is really good. This is my buddy Sefi's gameplay. But to get into Helldivers 2, it's a pretty big experience right now. Um, I got a lot to do. I don't know if I have the time to, de to like dedicate to it and to really get into it. Not really something I can hop into and hop out of right now, so... I'll probably have to pass on that until I get more free time at least, but... What I'm trying to say is that, um... Gaming, it, it seems like it's really only single player stuff, the occasional multiplayer thing, and none of it's ever mainstream, that's really taking off. I truly do predict that there will be a huge crash unless things change, and we already have people hyping up the next Call of Duty game when this Call of Duty game is the worst performing Call of Duty game ever. I, I mean, as far as, like, how YouTube perceives it, as far as people's views and stuff on YouTube, I mean, I know a lot of people in this community that are just, it, it's just not doing it for them. Like, covering Call of Duty is not doing it for them. It's, it's not a knock on them. I, I don't think they're doing anything necessarily wrong. I truly don't. I still watch them. I'm, you know, really into Call of Duty. I still watch uh, my colleagues and whatnot. I typically watch Marksman, uh, Jev, Nero, Eight Thoughts, Thunder, a Murder Show, Guys like that, you know, and it's just like, we brought this on ourselves. The people that never complained, that just stuck up for the game because they wanted to get invited out to Activision events, the people that cheated for money in tournaments, more and more people are getting out of for cheating. The game is in shambles. It may not seem like it because Activision isn't saying it, they're hiding data or whatever, but from what I have seen, hard numbers wise, that I've, I've been able to figure out, the game is in shambles. They're making a lot of money still, but the player counts are dropping and you can't have both. It's just not possible. Like it's simply not possible. One of those things is going to give. Profits are going to dip unless player counts continually go up or at least resurge to what they were prior to Modern Warfare 2. I thought Modern Warfare 2019 into Cold War was bad because the games were made in a pandemic. Little did I know how bad it would actually get. Vanguard into Modern Warfare 2 into a patch for Modern Warfare 2. Tell me the last three years. Like, seriously, sit there with a straight face and tell me the last three years of this franchise have not been absolute dog water. You know, it, something has to change. And it's not just Call of Duty. It's, it's an industry-wide problem. That new game, Skull and Bones or whatever, came out. I mean... I, I don't even know what happened to it. I, I really don't even know what happened to it. I'm gonna have to Google this just to see, honestly. Let me go here. We're gonna live Google search it. Skull and Bones. This was a this was touted as like a quadruple A title, whatever that is. Um, it got a seven out of ten from IGN. I've heard pretty much nothing but bad things about it on Twitter since it came out. And 30% of Google users like the game. Um, let me actually just check Wikipedia here. Critical reception. Skull and Bones received mixed or average reviews according to review aggregator website Metacritic. Yeah. The game launched DOA. Same with Suicide Squad. Game launched DOA did perform up to snuff. Tekken 8. I've heard a lot of longtime fighting game fans. Uh, one of my gameplay guys, Thick Glutes, 
heard a lot of of longtime fighting game fans not really being into the game. Mortal Kombat came out, and I mean that kind of came and went as a blip on the radar. What what's going on? Like, why are these franchises that were that have been successful for the past several decades just not doing anything anymore? Like, they're all just battle passes. They're all just incompetent devs. They're trying to market the games to casual morons that want their hand held. These people are going to leave the franchise at the drop of a hat for the next shiny object. You know, they're, they're, it's not sustainable. You might get a quick flash in the pan profit boost or whatever by appealing to morons and, and casual gamers. But casual gamers, truthfully, like the, the absolute morons will just jump to whatever. It doesn't matter. It's just whatever's popular. You don't have to make your game like baby them. They will hop in and get their shit pushed in over and over if they see like PewDiePie play in the game. I don't think PewDiePie even games anymore. But the point is, the point is, is that they'll hop on whatever's popular without thought you, you don't have to cater your game to these people wilts hurting the hardcore player the player that's going to play your game all year you're, you're sacrificing the quality of the game you're sacrificing the enjoyment from your hardcore supporters for casuals and, and money that is not sustainable and that's what we're seeing more and more you also don't have to put in a battle pass and other cringy stuff to make a profit on your game all you have to do is just make a good game. That's it. It'll sell. And that's so rare now. Elden Ring. Elden Ring has been the, the outlier the past couple years. I want to show you guys in closing here. I want to show you guys Elden Ring's Steam charts. Elden Ring came out and does not have new content. I mean, it, it got some content announced, but Elden Ring is just Elden Ring. You know, it came out, what, in 2022, and now we are here, and um, just look at this right here. We've seen such a resurgence in the average players on a single-player game with no new content right now. That is truly impressive. It, it really is on Steam charts. Like, single-player games, typically people play them, and then they put them up. It wasn't like that back in the day, but nowadays that's what they do. Elden Ring has resurged itself based on nothing but the fact that the core game is great. The core game is addictive, it's fun. Dare I say, I know a lot of like Dark Souls people may disagree because they're hardcore Dark Souls fans or whatever. I think Elden Ring is a masterpiece, I truly do. Sorry if that offends anyone, but it's just my opinion. Let's take a look at season three of Call of Duty here coming out, like Warzone and, and Modern Warfare 3. It's getting a lot of content. It truly is. And people are, are losing their mind over the fact that the game is getting a lot of content. But this is not going to move the needle because the core game is so messed up. Nobody cares about this stuff. You, you could bring all the content in the world. You could bring Snoop Dogg back for the 15th time in a dress, you know, with Easy e like using his scrotum as a speed bag. The ghost of EZE, I guess I'll say, because he passed away. But uh, you, you can bring that out. I mean, we got Godzilla Kong. Of course, you have to pay for it, I think. I don't think it's in the Battle Pass. But, you, you know, you have all this stuff coming out. You have integration after integration that, that's interesting. But the core game is so bad, it's, it's not going to move the needle. You know, players are going to come back for maybe a week, maybe two, and then they're going to fall off again. And the game is going to keep dipping. It's going to keep bleeding players because the core gameplay is not enjoyable. You know, the, the science experiment, EOMM matchmaking, the cheating epidemic, the fact that everything in the game, the core game is just recycled. The fact that none of the stuff they're bringing in, this like new content, really changes the core gameplay experience all that much. And then add into the fact that there's going to be bugs, glitches, problems galore every single time they release something new into the game. It's just not... It's the passion's gone. The interest is gone. Call of Duty needs to reinvent itself, and I don't mean bringing in, like, bad, dumb decisions that Infinity Ward try to push on the community. I'm talking about keeping in what works and trying new things from people that are talented. Dev teams that are talented need to bring in new ideas to improve the actual gameplay. Going back to that whole, like, you don't need this content fluff to get, get players interested in your game. It's like jingling keys in front of them. Yeah, it'll keep them interested for maybe a week or two, but that's it. Uh, to get people to keep playing your game years after the fact, you need incredibly solid, 
innovative, unique gameplay. I, I think back to like Resident Evil 4, you know, that game came out in what, 2005 or so? Could be wrong there, 2005. I go back and I play that game once every couple years because the core gameplay is so enjoyable. It has not had new content since it's like PS2 re-release or whatever, or you know, like uh, the, the Steam release of the HD remaster or whatever. They came out with a remake, of course, but other than that, I mean, the actual old game has not had new content in ages. I still go back and play it because the core game is so good. I want Call of Duty to move away from this yearly release stuff. I'm sick of this reset and then recycling content year after year. And I think everybody else is too. I, I, I don't know, man. I think other games are doing the same thing, except putting in stupid new cringy battle pass bullshit that people are sick of. This needs to change. I'm serious. We're going to see a crash, the likes of which we've never seen before. If, you know, the price of living keeps going up, the price of video games keeps going up, I think most logical people will pick eating and paying the rent over buying Call of Duty skins or even buying the game in the first place to play. It, it, something needs to change and it needs to change now. Guys, I am out of time. This is a different style of commentary. If you liked it, leave a like rating. I would appreciate it. And again, support your Call of Duty content creators right now. It is going to be an incredibly rough year. We're going to see record lows uh, across the board from viewership to Steam player numbers, the only metric we can actually track. Record lows, it's just coming, I'm telling you. And uh, things are gonna get worse before they get better, sadly. I'm here to try to be the voice of reason. I pray to God that you know, video game devs out there, listen to me. I know I'm harsh, I know I'm mean, and I know that I'm nasty sometimes, but I feel like I have to be, because nobody listens otherwise. Anyway, this was a more grounded commentary, a, a more calm commentary, because I really want to get my point across. I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a good one. Peace out. Advice. 